And now we're still seeing some gusty winds, but the pressure is rising rapidly over the northern part of the island. And as you can see here at the Travel Lodge, part of that sign was blown down. Uh, really just a glancing blow. The peak wind gust reported at San Juan Airport was only just above 60 miles an hour. Now it may have been a little windier up on some of the mountaintops. And unfortunately, one fatality so far, one fatality, a surfer from New York City uh, did not heed the warnings and so far has not been found, assumed lost at sea. We also have reports from ham radio operators that a Venezuelan ship is drifting in the midst of the hurricane off the coast and that half of the 42 people on board are missing. The Coast Guard trying to locate them, but so far have not had much luck. But you can see the wind uh, whipping through the island of Puerto Rico this afternoon. Now, earlier today, wind gusts as high as 103 miles an hour of the Virgin Islands. The weather is improving dramatically dramatically as Bertha pulls away from the coast. Now this has been a very unusual storm because it formed off the east coast of Africa and we've been following it for a couple of days becoming a hurricane last night and then going right through the Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands and the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands this morning and now sitting off to the north of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Latest advisory puts it at 45 miles north of San Juan but uh, we're going to have another advisory here momentarily. We should have an update on that because obviously now as we'll show you it's farther north than that. Winds are 90 miles an hour so it's still a category one hurricane but we do think that it will increase to a Category 2 overnight because it's moving over open water, the water is warm, and this is just what Bertha needs to strengthen. Pressure continues to fall too, now down to 971 middle bars. The wind field, hurricane force winds off to the north and northeast to the center, still getting some tropical force wind gusts over Puerto Rico, but the weather as a whole is improving. The rain will be diminishing uh, later on this evening and life will get back to normal. This is certainly was no Luis or Maryland through the Virgin Islands. Remember last year, Category 3 and Category 4 hurricanes doing substantial damage, uh, fatalities, and we've been very fortunate with this one. So far, Bertha is just a Category 1. But hurricane warnings continue for Puerto Rico and also as far north and east as the Turks and Caicos, north coast of Haiti and now the central Bahama Islands are under hurricane watches. Now these watches here were extended uh, north and west into the central Bahamas late this afternoon and with a continued track off to the northwest we'll probably see these watches extended farther off to the north and west later on tonight if not first thing on Tuesday morning. Take a look at the strike probability. Now uh, those of you on the southeast coast I know are getting a little antsy. Everybody in Florida getting uh, certainly their act together and that's good. We still cannot make a definitive statement on where Bertha is going to end up. There's several scenarios. Uh, there was a trough approaching from the east. Now, if you remember last summer, that trough really uh, helped us on the east coast because it really steered all those major hurricanes, including Luis and Maryland, away from the eastern seaboard. We're not sure, it's not etched in stone, that that's going to happen this time. And certainly by this time tomorrow, we should have a better idea on the strike probability for southeast Florida and anywhere on the eastern seaboard. But if you're watching uh, east coast of Florida, right up through Georgia and the Carolina beaches, stay with the Weather Channel. We'll have continuing coverage, and we will certainly give you the latest from the Hurricane Center as we receive it. Here's the latest infrared picture and you can see the eye now popping up on the latest picture. We weren't able to see that over the past couple of hours and we've seen the eye wall kind of get tighter. So this is a sure sign that Bertha is now intensifying as it moves off to the northwest. This is the Mona Passage here. This is the north coast of the Dominican Republic and some big resorts over here around Porta Plata. That we've got Nagua, some uh, towns here, but it's going to probably go off to the north and west and again the Dominican Republic will miss the brunt of Hurricane Bertha. Next question is what happens after that and that certainly remains to be answered but again if you're in the southeast coast of the United States watching tonight uh, stay with us we'll keep you uh, posted. Radar clearly shows you the eye of Hurricane Bertha and those heavier rain bands associated with the eye wall off to the north and off to the northeast but notice if you're watching from San Juan or anywhere in, Por anywhere in Puerto Rico that most of the rain is over with and the weather is going to be improving dramatically through this evening. We'll have continuing coverage on Hurricane Bertha and certainly uh, the possibility of a landfall in the U.S. is not out of the question but it's just a little too early to uh, give you any kind of idea of where that will be if that certainly does occur. A lot of uh, things have to be looked at in the next 24 hours. In the meantime, we uh, check in on the west, rest of the weather and some severe weather back here on the mainland and we go to the studio with Gene Rubin.
Thank you, Mike. A small dose of wind and rain might be welcome in Texas right now where the heat is holding on, and we also have the threat of some severe weather to tell you about. This Hurricane Bertha, it has intensified overnight. Now it is a Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale, packing winds of 115 miles an hour. Let's see the satellite picture on Bertha as it continues to churn the waters of the Atlantic. We have the infrared colored enhanced cloud tops for you to indicate where we have a lot of deep convection. The good news is that the storm is over open waters in terms of heavy rains right now, but the bad news in that it being over, over open waters is that that's where we get the breeding grounds for this system to intensify even more so because that's what tropical systems like and that's very warm waters and that's what we're finding. Now it continues to move to the west, northwest at about 18 miles an hour, so it is moving... Uh, it looks as though just to the east of the Bahama Islands, which uh, basically are right in this area. You can see the Bahama Islands here. This is um, Andros Island and Grand Bahama here, Nassau being here. It looks as though the system will continue to move in this direction, and that will put it basically east of the islands. Here's a look at the latest statistics now. The system is centered at 20.7 degrees north, 68.4 degrees west. That makes it about 180 miles east-southeast of the Turks Island, with winds, again, 115 miles an hour. It is moving to the west, northwest, at 18, with a low pressure of 960 millibars. You can see the track of Bertha over the last couple of days and as it moved off the coast of Africa and moved off to the west we saw it intensify become a tropical storm and then a hurricane and as it moved near the island of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico being right here and you can see that pretty much the eye of the storm was north of Puerto Rico nevertheless we had quite a bit of uh, wind damage in the northern sections of Puerto Rico, and we have scenes from the area. Even though Hurricane Bertha did not hit San Juan, Puerto Rico directly, um, just the same, it brought powerful winds and very heavy rains to the area. Two people were killed on the island when their car ran off a rain-slicked road and hit a tree. In addition, a surfer is missing and presumed dead. Another surfer drowned over the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is just east of Puerto Rico. So we've had some problems now with Hurricane Bertha, and it seems as though things are getting worse instead of getting better for the southern Bahamian islands. Let's get a look at the strike probability now. We know where it's been, but where is it going? We have a better chance that this system will move east of the islands. Again, if it continues its same path over the next 12 hours or so, it will basically be east of the islands, but we still have the potential for a tropical storm and hurricane force winds to be felt over the islands. Right now, we have tropical force winds being felt the eastern parts of Hispaniola, over the northern and coastal areas of the Dominican Republic. And we think as this system continues to move toward the Bahamian Islands now, we'll begin to feel tropical storm force winds and perhaps hurricane force winds at times. So hurricane warnings remain in effect for the eastern parts of the Dominican Republic, Hurricane warnings for the central and southern Bahama Islands. The northern Bahama Islands, we have a hurricane watch in effect. Now that includes Nassau and Freeport and a tropical storm warning for the northern shore of Haiti. There is Hurricane Bertha in respect to the lower 48, and it will continue again to move to the west to northwest. So the immediate threat is the Bahamian Islands, but where will it go after that? That's the big question. And we do have some suggestions. Most of our computer models suggest that the system will continue to move to the west-northwest over the next 12 hours and then perhaps start to curve off to the east, taking it away from the lower 48. But all interest along the east coast of Florida up to the Carolinas, you need to stay abreast of the situation. Of course, we will keep our eyes on Hurricane Bertha for you and constantly communicate with the National Hurricane Center. You keep your eyes on us and you'll be informed of the very latest. That's a look at Bertha. Now let's check on the weather elsewhere across the of hurricane coverage. Good evening, I'm Dave Schwartz here at the Weather Channel along with Stu Ostro, our senior meteorologist for the night. And Stu and I and the rest of the forecasters here keeping a close eye on Hurricane Bertha. And speaking of the eye of Hurricane Bertha, where is it? 
Let's check on the current particulars. 23.7 degrees north, 72.6 west. That's the center of the eye of the hurricane as of 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That place is at 115 miles east of San Salvador, Bahamas, and it is moving parallel to that chain of islands. 110 mile per hour are the current sustained winds near the center. The movement northwest rapidly, 21 miles per hour, and that really has us concerned for the southeast U.S. The pressure has risen just a little bit at 972 millibars or 28.7 deg degrees of inches of mercury. Now, much of that information has been gleaned by folks who are flying through the eye of that hurricane. They're flying through this thing as it moves toward the northwest. Hurricane warnings are in effect for the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas. And we've got on the line for you live Lieutenant Colonel Doug Nylett of the Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunters. Lieutenant Colonel Nylett, do you read? This is Dave Schwartz of the Weather Channel. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Colonel P.I. Pearson uh, calling from uh WC-130, uh, 60 miles out of the eye. Uh, the navigator uh, with the crew of seven from Biloxi, Biloxi, Mississippi, Cecil Air Force Base and Air Force Reserve crew. And how do you read me? We read you here at the Weather Channel. I, I'd like to know how strong the winds are at and what flight level above the water at your last pass through the eye. Okay, well, uh, currently, uh, out to the eye one more time. This will be our fourth pass tonight. We're uh, 46 miles out. And we're showing winds uh, presently uh, 50 knots. One of the ways... We're uh, flying 10,000 uh, feet and... Uh, Ninety-five knots on your last pass through. And, okay. and speaking of uh, the winds, one of the ways we know that you uh, uh, estimate the winds closer to the surface is by looking at the, the state of the sea. After dark, do you have any way of uh, getting a good estimate on the surface winds? Well, you just, sir, uh, we, we have uh, instruments inside the aircraft that we actually uh, drop out and measure the, uh, the winds as it falls out of the aircraft. Other than that, no, it's uh, dark out here. Visually, you can't see anything, uh, so we uh, rely on the instruments after dark. Thank you so much for that live report. You're just outside the eye of Hurricane Bertha, the Hurricane Hunters Air Force Reserve plane, direct to you here on the Weather Channel. Now, this is the same hurricane that passed that went right over the Virgin Islands, just barely uh, skirted Puerto Rico. And now they're cleaning up from that. I believe we have a live report from the Virgin Islands from Jennifer Bloomfield, who is a Red Cross representative. Jennifer, what kind of uh, damage have you seen on well, the Virgin Islands? Our preliminary damage uh, reports indicate that there are approximately 2,000 homes on the three U.S. Virgin Islands that have been affected by the storm. Um, less than 100 of those have been completely destroyed. The majority have gotten some damage. Um, some of them are unlivable. Some people have returned to their homes. But we're still opening. We still have Red Cross shelters opened at this time. As I understand it, some of that damage was to structures that were not yet rebuilt from last year's hurricanes, Louise and Maryland. That's right. As you drive around the islands, you can see that many of the homes are in the process of rebuilding. They have newer roofs or some still have plastic sheeting. Those newer roofs and that plastic sheeting has been blown away by Hurricane Bertha. So for many of these people, they were just starting to get back on their feet and, the hur and Hurricane Bertha has set them back. Lots of folks uh, head to the Caribbean islands now and are concerned about their reservations uh, in St. Thomas and elsewhere in the Virgin Islands. How, how have the resorts withstood the onslaught of Hurricane Bertha? It seems that most of the resorts and other tourist attractions are up and running. Um, the best advice is to just call ahead. The airport is fully functional at this time. Okay, thank you, Jennifer, for that live report. Keep up the good work there, as uh, is the Red Cross. and. You might want to consider a donation to the Red Cross because there could be some more damage before Hurricane Bertha finally winds itself out in the Atlantic. And well, 
I guess that all depends on where it ends up making landfall. If it makes landfall again, right now it's affecting the southern Bahamas. That right, a hurricane warning is in effect there. Now the question is, will it hit the U.S. mainland? And for that, we turn to the expert over here, Stu Ostro. Well, one, let's put it this way. When we try to make a weather forecast, there are a couple different processes that we use. One is to look at the computer guidance, the computer forecasts, and we will certainly anxiously be awaiting some of the new information coming in throughout the night. But the other way is just to simply analyze what the atmosphere is doing. And as part of that, there are a couple of different ways that we do that. One is to look at satellite photos. And we have an example of a satellite photo, which is a little bit different than what you might be used to. Uh, basically, what it is, though, is fairly simple. It's just uh, looking at the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. And aside from that, it helps us uh, get an idea of the, the motion of the air and the weather systems. One of the things that uh, we've been noticing over the past couple of days is a uh, dip in the jet stream over the northeast U.S., but over the course of the last few hours, we see these clouds and moisture right in here moving pretty much due west to east, while there's another little spoke rotating around an upper level low pressure system up here. If this spoke is able to get close enough as it swings across to the south and east to pick up the hurricane, it would pull it up and perhaps even miss the U.S. coast entirely, or at least move a little farther north than what it's doing now. However, certainly this first piece that came through with these clouds over here did not pick up the hurricane, and it has not shown a decided turn to the north. And that's why we still feel that uh, we cannot give the all clear for the United States just about anywhere along the southeast U.S. coast. And if that next little uh, spoke that I was talking about rotating around does not pick it up, it would have even a greater chance of, of hitting the U.S. mainland. So for that reason, people need to stay tuned. It is a very close call, and right now the hurricane warnings exist all the way through the Bahamas, but not to the United States yet. The National Hurricane Center has suggested that there may be a watch issued somewhere in the southeast by 11 o'clock tonight. So that's less than an hour away, Eastern Daylight Time. Stay tuned to the Weather Channel for more updates on hurricane, hurricane coverage. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. John Hope, our hurricane specialist. Jim Cantor here in the forecast center to continue to discuss Bertha. And hopefully, uh, John, at some point, this relay, we relay wheel will stop and we'll find out where this thing is going to go. But it's been very difficult so far. Well, yes, but on the other hand, it's been um, making a pretty steady motion mm -hmm. toward the northwest until today. Now, we can see a little bit of variation today that we haven't seen before, a little bit of slowing down. But we need to be very careful about looking at any uh, very short-term trends here. Basically, we we're still dealing with a hurricane that's moving toward the northwest and getting closer to the coast. I guess the good news is we do have the hurricane warnings up for a good part of the Florida coast. Yes. So good, preparations yeah, and, are well And the Georgia and South Carolina coast as well. All right. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let me show you those current hurricane warnings, and you can see where they are and where they extend to. And you'll notice from Sebastian Inlet to Cape Romaine, those are hurricane warnings, hurricane conditions within 24 hours. The Bahamas, where we've already seen on the island of Great Abaco, as reported earlier by Mr. Morgan, uh, some wind gusts near 80 knots. So you folks around Great Abaco are feeling the, some of the effects of Hurricane Bertha. It's not going to be over, even though you will get calm, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Sebastian Inlet to Deerfield Beach, still some tropical storm warnings. Conditions have been underway across the southeastern coastline. Good afternoon. I'm Janetta Jones, and this is our hurricane expert, John Hope. We are following Hurricane Bertha, and John, over the last few hours, things have changed a bit. We have some new information. Well, first of all, we want to point out that the hurricane warnings have been extended north, where mm -hmm. they extend all along the North Carolina border now on up to the Virginia North Carolina border. The tropical storm warnings have been taken down for the uh, southern part of Florida so we want to emphasize there's no warnings of any kind for southern Florida right. and that includes Broward, Dade, and Monroe counties, no uh, very heavily populated areas, no warnings. And we also are uh, anticipating I think that uh, if the current trend that we see continues that some of the warnings, hurricane warnings along the Florida coast are likely to be discontinued uh, later this evening or tonight. Okay, depending on what happens with yes, Hurricane exactly. Bertha. We can show you those hurricane warnings that are in effect right now, as John was mentioning, from Sebastian Inlet just to the north of there, all the way north towards the North Carolina-Virginia border. Now, those obviously used to be uh, hurricane watches north into the Carolinas, but now they have been upgraded to hurricane warnings. and. 
that is what you need to know. Obviously, mandatory evacuations have already begun for the Outer Banks of North Carolina, coastal regions, and beach areas all along the coastline there, including northern Florida. And Ocracoke Island and Hatteras Island have been completely evacuated. The governor of Florida earlier today ordered a state of emergency. There is the threat for beach erosion, coastal flooding, large swells, and dangerous riptides. Obviously, gusty winds are also a threat, too. Take a look at the latest coordinates. This is as of the 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time advisory. This is the new information we want to pass along to you. It is now centered 65 miles east-northeast of Great Abaco. Winds are holding steady at about 105 miles per hour. Now, that's been the wind speed just about all day long here. Uh, it's moving towards the northwest at 15 miles per hour, and there you have the pressure readings in inches and millibars. But as John was alluding to, we may be seeing a more northward turn. We'll have to watch it over the next few hours and see. If it does turn more to the north, that could mean good news for parts of Florida. We have someone standing by live on the phone in the Abaco Islands. I when you're born and raised on this coast, it's something you just live with. It's like the people in the Midwest where they buy tornadoes. We just deal with hurricanes as they come. Residents call this evacuation somewhat routine. They've done this all before. But visitors saw it a lot differently and were very anxious to get off Ocracoke Island. But it got really hairy this morning. We had about, I don't know how many cars waiting in line and everybody was saying, we have reservations, we have reservations, and finally they were just taking them, just taking them, putting them on the ferries. As for people trying to get back on the island? All ferry rides back across Pamlico Sound were closed off as soon as the mandatory evacuation was announced. Ferry captains aren't taking any chances with Bertha. If you are just joining us, I'm Janetta Jones along with our tropical expert, John Hope. We're here in the Forecast Center tracking Hurricane Bertha. Now, John, we've been watching it very, very closely. What is going to be one of the biggest threats from this particular hurricane? Well, it's a very large uh, hurricane in the first place. We'd like to point that out. There are a lot of different uh, sizes of hurricanes. And they know that getting a jump on a storm like Bertha may not be much of a jump. Those that ignore it may find their boat on the other side of the street or into the cars or somewhere, and that's happened before. And lifeguards had enough trouble today. They had to save three swimmers this morning from riptides. Those high tides and riptides, along with just heavy waves, caused them to close the beaches today at 2 p.m. for all swimmers. And again, they said they're going to keep that warning up through tomorrow. Deborah. Terry, have you seen much of an exodus uh, off of the, the area of Wrightsville Beach? You do have to cross over that one bridge to get out of there. Not at all. In fact, most of the vacationers and residents alike were pretty much staying put until they heard exactly where Bertha would be hitting. All right. Terry, thanks for that live report. People along the southeast coast are leaving or keeping a close eye on their TVs for word of Bertha, but there is another way to stay up to date. You know, folks at home and at work are using their computers to follow the storm's progress. Online reporter Tom Lawrence has been on the Internet all day searching for information. Tom, what's the best way to look for hurricane information? Well, actually, there are lots of ways to do it. Probably the easiest way is simply to type Hurricane Bertha into a search engine and push, and you're going to come up with a lot of stuff. The Weather Center page on WRAL Online is a great place to start. This is an unpredictable storm at an unusual time of year, so Bertha's getting lots of attention on the Internet. When you get to the WRAL Online Weather Center, click on Latest on Hurricane Bertha. You'll find the latest advisories from the National Weather Service. You can print out a tracking chart and plot Bertha's progress. Satellite images give you a view from space, and you can download audio reports from the National Hurricane Center. We have seen it continue this northwest track at a little slower forward speed. The slower forward speed would perhaps be a sign that it's going to begin to take that turn more toward the north. A word of warning, lots of people are checking these sites, so be patient or try another site. The National Weather Service at Wilmington has a site with animated satellite images and good coastal information. CNN Interactive headlined its page today with Bertha's threat. More real audio from North Carolina's emergency management. At Ocracoke Island at 8.30 this morning, they declared a state of emergency and ordered evacuation of that island. Many states have emergency management homepages for special information about their areas, including tips about preparing for a hurricane. 
FEMA has a massive web page with maps, advisories, and situation reports about how the feds are responding. This enhanced satellite image is found on the Miami Herald's homepage. With the storm threatening, this site is full of stories, weather service statements, and evacuation information. Now, when you find a hurricane website you like, bookmark it so you can go back to it easily. And let me suggest the WRAL online site, certainly. Through the day, I've noticed that it's becoming more and more difficult to get to many of these sites, particularly the National Weather Service and, of course, guys, the uh, Hurricane Center, too. It's uh, likely to get more and more difficult as the storm approaches because a lot of people are certainly using computers and online services to get information. Tom, how up-to-date are... For ...go begins its cleanup. The hurricane skirted the island by about 45 miles to the north, but the storm whipped enough wind there to down power lines and flood parts of the island. For the most part, residents considered themselves lucky. Some buildings collapsed in the wind. Cleanup crews were busy clearing away debris and brush. At last word, four deaths are blamed on the storm. Still have to get off. Rather festive. I suppose ignorance is bliss. <laughs> As they say. All right. Thanks a lot, George. Take care. We'll see you later this evening. George Millet, live at Nags Head. So where is the storm headed right now? Meteorologist Bill Ray has the latest on the outlook, Bill. And we'll start by showing you the satellite picture. You can see it churning around right to the northeast of those northernmost Bahama Islands. It's moving to the northwest at 17 to 15 miles per hour. It's slowing down. And what concerns me is it still has to go over the warm uh, Gulf Stream water. Uh, Brett, we mentioned the red flag is flying here. It's also been flying most of the day at Wrightsville Beach. Surf very high there, very dangerous riptide. Terry Gruca joins us now as we continue our team coverage. She spent her day at Wrightsville Beach and joins us from... David, you know it's... ...staying on the beach to try to enjoy one more day in the sun. Meantime, in Moorhead City in Carteret County, we found folks who weren't packing up or boarding up. They were stocking up on items they may need to ride out the storm at the coast, although you don't see them doing anything of the sort here. Officials fear if the storm does make a bead on our coast. And on Hatteras and Ocracoke Islands, 50,000 residents and visitors there were asked to evacuate this morning. Hurricane Bertha seems to have a mind of her own and is making forecasters nervous. The storm is projected to move north, but she hasn't yet. Here's a look at one possible path of Hurricane Bertha from now until 8 a.m. Saturday. The National Weather Service gives these percentages of probability that Bertha will pass within 65 miles of these cities. Daytona, 20 percent. Savannah, Georgia, 25 percent. Myrtle Beach, 23 percent. Cape Hatteras is 16 percent. And New York City sits at only 7 percent. Another concern to many coastal residents is the damage the storm could do, even if it never does touch land. The North Carolina coast is particularly susceptible to beach erosion. Now, if you take a look at this map, you can see the areas that are most affected by beach erosion, from Bald Head Island up the coast to New River Inlet. One explanation for all this is that the coast faces southeast. That makes it a direct hit for storms. Now, we have people all over the place covering this. Vin Crosby is joining us live right now from Curie Beach. Vin? Hey guys, uh, boy, the conditions have really gone downhill during this afternoon. Uh, this morning, the what you see here, the ocean was flat as it could possibly be. Now the seas have kicked up this afternoon, mainly because of a front that has gone through. But the seas have kicked up primarily because of the effects of Bertha, which is still some 500 miles to the south. Now, if the forecast track holds the same and it still comes up this way by tomorrow night, this scene is going to be drastically different. As a matter of fact, where we're standing, will be probably underwater. Hurricane warnings are in effect for much. That would indicate a 24-hour time frame and for purposes of... Um, protect the beaches themselves, even if Hurricane Bertha comes ashore somewhere else or just skirts the coastline. It's a good bet that the rough seas and choppy waves are going to chew away a lot of the beach. Some severe beach erosion, and property owners will tell you this sand is just like gold. Emergency management officials say no matter where the storm comes ashore, there'll be some damage here. And they'll decide tomorrow whether to start evacuating some of the beaches in low-lying areas. In New Hanover County, Greg Barnes, News Channel 11. Well, now, while some people were told to stay off the beach and be ready to drive inland, there was a more emphatic warning for others. Particularly those on North Carolina's most remote barrier islands. Vacationers on Cedar Island were warned early and began evacuating this morning. The Silver Lake Ferry delivered scores to safer grounds on this side of the Pamlico. But at least think and presume that you would see a lot more activity there. Quite a different scene in South Florida, though, David, mm -hmm. earlier on. Thanks. Oh, yeah. 
While well, all eyes are focused on the coast, but a great deal of the battle against Bertha will be run out of Raleigh. The it's a last hurrah before their vacations are forced to an end. We have never experienced a hurricane, and we have no desire to experience one, so that's why we're planning to leave. Sandy Randolph's attitude seemed to be growing more popular today as dark clouds moved in and Atlantic Beach began looking less and less like paradise and more like a possible port of call for Hurricane Bertha. I kind of messed up the vacation, but we have to go, we go. It's too rough to swim. They were taking other precautions, too, moving lifeguard stands back up the beach in case of swelling seas. It seems everyone is at least making tentative plans for Bertha now. I think it'll never hit her. If it does, I want my boy back where we live. Skies are getting darker to the south, as you could see. Could be the beginnings of Bertha. People are still trying to enjoy the water, though, as much as they can. But more and more people are entertaining the idea of leaving Atlantic Beach tomorrow, unfortunately. But, you know, it's hard when you've got the warm water, the warm sand between your toes to feel threatened by any weather. Back to you. All right, as George said, ignorance is bliss. Thank you so much for that. Support. In North Carolina, our focused on Hurricane Bertha coming. This magnitude can result in quite a bit of havoc and some damage. Nassau in the Bahamas was spared the worst of Bertha's wrath, but as you can see in these pictures, they are dealing with quite a mess. Power outages, fallen trees, lost shingles, and displaced satellite dishes are just some of the effects Bahamians have seen today. As that is the front that has passed through, but what we're going to be most concerned about is Hurricane Bertha, which is sitting down here, uh, bringing some very high winds right now to the Bahamas. Winds have been uh, estimated at 100 miles per hour. Let me give you the latest warnings and watches that have been issued. There's a hurricane warning that extends from Sebastian Inlet here in Florida, makes its way all the way up to the North Carolina-Virginia border. Now, what a hurricane warning means is that hurricane force winds will develop in the next 24 hours. So hurricane conditions are imminent to the North Carolina coast. This is our latest picture. It shows the movement, which actually has been a northwesterly track, starting to jog a little bit more to the north right now, which has been the forecast all along. The latest stats as of the 5 o'clock advisory put it here about 65 miles east northeast of Greater Baco, and that is about 500 miles south southeast of Wilmington. The winds are at 105 miles per hour, and the movement to the northwest at 15 miles per hour, moving pretty slowly. Now, as it rolls over some warmer water in the Gulf streams, that could allow it to strengthen a little bit. We'll have to continue to watch it. But this is the latest forecast track, which means by Friday, it should be coming inland across North Carolina. Remember, this is a forecast. 60 miles, they're all still very low. These go all the way from tremendous amount of uncertainty as to exactly where it's. 60 communication location and you'll be able to track the storm along with us. We're going to continue with our hourly updates. A little bit of activity sitting down along the coast and you can see the showers and thunder showers. I do want to emphasize this is not to do with Bertha. It's an old frontal system that's just kind of hanging around right along the coast from Wilmington through Brunswick County. The tropical update is sponsored by the Home Depot where low prices are just the beginning. Current satellite imagery shows the location of Bertha, at least to the satellite's eye, sitting off the coast of North Florida, South, and North Carolina. Some other clouds off of North Carolina are associated with a, a boundary, the trough uh, that we were talking about that is helping push Bertha northward and then hopefully eastward. But and that's causing some heavy rain along the Carolina coastline. But there is Bertha, and Bertha is currently located at this area. It's centered at 28.8 north and 77.0 west, 380 miles south of Wilmington, North Carolina. Its winds are at 100 miles per hour, moving north-northwest at 13 miles per hour, and its pressure is 977 millibars, 28.8 .85 inches of mercury. Again, the hurricane warnings have been discontinued in Florida, but there is a hurricane warning along the coast of North and South Carolina, southward to Brunswick, Georgia, and then a hurricane watch northward from North Carolina, Virginia border to Chincoteague, Virginia. That includes the Pamlico Sound and the Albemarle uh, Sound as well. Let's take a look at the coordinates once more for you. 28.8 north, 77.0 west, 380 miles south of Wilmington, North Carolina.
Now, it is expected that Bertha will near the coast of North Carolina at about Wilmington sometime early tomorrow afternoon. That's the National Hurricane Center's forecast track at this hour, but it's still pretty far away, and the specific track, as you know, is very difficult to determine. So stay, uh, stay tuned to the Weather Channel and to your local advisories. But there are some local statements that have been issued as well. Uh, this uh, statement out of North Carolina, for example, uh, is for the uh, following counties, Dare Hyde, Terrell, Washington, Martin, Pamlico, Beaufort, Craven, Cataret, and Onslow counties. This is a uh, that hurricane warning that is in effect. Uh, we've got some swells already uh, out there at Frying Pan Shoals. That's the buoy off of Wilmington, indicating seas at about 11 feet. And there's some dangerous rip currents out there. Winds will be on the increase. Seas are going to build about 15 feet this afternoon, and uh, by tomorrow they expect uh, uh, seas are going to be building to some 18 feet. So all of the people in mobile homes, low-lying areas, coastal properties, beachfront properties are all urged to relocate inland. Again, this is the. Hurricane Bertha, still a strong Category 2 hurricane, and it continues to move to the north, northwest. And as it does, it will near the coast of the Carolinas beginning tomorrow morning. Now, the highest strike probability is in this area, and that includes extreme northeastern South Carolina and southeastern North Carolina. And that's why the public statements and the local statements are being issued. There's also one out of North Carolina for the uh, for these counties of South Carolina, the northeastern counties, that includes Horry County, Dillon, Marion, Florence, and Williamsburg, and Georgetown counties. And in southeastern North Carolina, we're talking about Fender, New Hanover, Brunswick, Columbus, and Bladen counties. Again, urged to, if you live in a mobile home, low-lying area, beachfront property, being urged to move in. North Carolina, you know, Ocracoke Island and Hatteras Island have both been, are under an evacuation mandate. And and people have been evacuating since yesterday. Dangerous situation, Category 2 hurricane heading in this direction, likely to move in near Wilmington early tomorrow afternoon. Satellite picture again of Bertha as it is moving north-northwest, but it is moving more northerly now than westerly. So the central coast of Florida, the warnings and watches have been dropped for that part of Florida. Bertha battled back. Bombing the Carolina coast with wind and strong storm surge. Pounding power lines, tumbling trees, pummeling piers. While the damage is widespread, no deaths or injuries so far. Thanks for joining us. We'll join Deborah on assignment at the coast in just a moment. But our top story, battling Bertha. Bertha stormed ashore earlier today, packing 105 mile an hour winds. We have comprehensive team coverage all along the coast. Wrightsville Beach was especially hard hit. The Johnny Mercer Pier was ripped apart. One of several piers, the storm slammed. At Carolina Beach, the scars of Bertha are already visible. The roof on this beach house was not able to withstand Bertha's winds. Trees all along the coast appear to have taken the hardest hit. Trees and limbs are down from the coast to the triangle. It will be morning before we know the full extent of the damage to the beaches. Storm surge pushed water up under houses and onto streets. Brent Bear begins our coverage from Atlantic Beach, which was especially hard hit. Jim, Bertha has hit Atlantic Beach hard, real hard. The gusts of winds have continued over the past two hours. Power is out all over this island. There are reports of gas main breaks all throughout the evening. For Atlantic Beach, Bertha has packed a powerful punch. Bertha started getting nasty by early evening. The surf swelled, pounding sand dunes all over the island, and with every hour, she gained even more strength. These are the heaviest wind winds of the day here on Atlantic Beach, so heavy, you can hardly stand still. And with the waves pounding over the dunes, there likely won't be much beach here tomorrow. As for the roads on Atlantic Beach, you can't tell where some of them lead. Others are underwater. Part of this mobile home park has become an island in Bogue Sound. Power lines and trees are scattered throughout the island, and some gas stations were slapped by Bertha. Quite a bit more damage than I had anticipated. 
For the residents who stayed, some are second-guessing that decision. Probably would have been smarter to be off the island, but uh, I don't think we were, our lives were in danger. Bertha has definitely left her mark on Atlantic Beach. Tomorrow, residents here will start putting things back together. Of course, it's tough to estimate the damage now. It'll be much easier at first light to see how far Bertha has ripped through this island. Now let's go to meteorologist Greg Fischel for the latest on Bertha. All right, Brett, uh, pretty dramatic stuff there indeed. This is the latest satellite photograph, and the center is just on the southern and western edge of these cold cloud tops that you see there. Uh, the latest coordinates, 35.8 north south. A couple of others to the left. You can see this one completely uprooted in the backyard and has basically tipped over a shed uh, that was on top of it. Um, basically, all the neighbors around here say that Bertha took them by surprise. Trees are down all over the place here, a whole line of them chopped in half. Cancelled for the south, and even here on the triangle, there's a block of Kildare Farm Road in Cary. I'm amazed. I looked out my back door, I was like, oh my goodness. Just a big gush of wind, and then we could hear something. Any doubt in your mind that it was a tornado? No, no, because when I looked outside and saw everything flying around, I knew within my heart it was a tornado. I knew that. <laughs> Martha says her 20-year-old son was actually the eyewitness. He was at the uh, kitchen door, and he opened up the door, and uh, he said he saw the flannel cloud, and then he was really concerned then, and then he was ready to go and get shelter by then. Trent and Pam, who live next door, didn't see the funnel cloud, but they saw most of the damage. They lost everything. What a difference a few hours has made because right now the, the winds are still a little brisk, but the rain has let up and it's really a pretty comfortable night out here on Wrightsville Beach. It is, however, completely black. No power, about 100,000 people without power out in this area. Trees are down, roofs have been blown off, there is water damage, several piers have been destroyed. They're still assessing all the damage out there on the islands, but there's no doubt that Bertha definitely made her mark on this part of the coast. Just before noon, Hurricane Bertha blew into the Wrightsville Beach area fast and furious. Howling hurricane force winds and torrential rains lasted for three hours before suddenly it all stopped. The eye of the storm passed over and gave everyone a false sense that Bertha was gone. You think it's the eye of the hurricane? Yes. Yeah, oh, I know it. And we're now coming by mid morning. On the other side. The second side of the storm did come through about an hour later, but with a little less punch. Soon people started cleaning up the damage. In Wilmington, the wait for Bertha is now over. Huge trees blocked several streets, and traffic had a tough time getting around. Here at the Baldwin house, with the power out, candles lit a room like... Clayton tonight when she drove into drooping power lines. The lines were being pulled down by heavy branches, and the driver didn't see them until it was too late. The car went... It's been a good friend, but it, it's like everything. There's times things have to go, and time for the to go. Very few trees did any damage to any homes in Wilmington, but this car didn't survive. It belongs to a family with a newborn baby. Her parents looked at Bertha with a different spin compared to past hurricanes. If this had been a couple years ago, uh, we would have probably been in a hurricane. Going on at the time, hundreds of people, a lot of horses were inside, but there are no reports of any injuries. Now, Bertha brought down trees and power lines all throughout the Triangle. Two roads in Raleigh were even closed today, part of Buck Jones Road from Orchard to Wilmot, and a section of Norman Street closed from Avon Ferry to I-40. Emergency crews advised. David Crabtree is. David? Thanks a lot, Deborah. There's going to be a lot of beach lost here as well. There was flooding this afternoon. You look... Very hard. That's right. We continue our... You can still see lights reflecting in the water that remains. There's has been roughing the storm there, and she joins us now. It's parallel with the ocean three or four feet of sand. There was a lot of damage here this afternoon. You're talking about fishing piers earlier. Take a look at the video we shot just a few minutes ago. This is the Carolina Beach fishing pier. What's left of it, only about a third of this uh, several hundred foot long pier now remains. We are told that the pylons were tossed around like toothpicks this afternoon. Some of them bobbing in the water, sort of like fishing uh, plugs and floats. Residents of Southport say they've weathered hurricane... 
mile stretch of the beach. There were also some cars that were damaged. The Mercedes Benz is buried in the sand. The wood that is pushed up against the sand and the car is part of the pier. And just down from the Mercedes, we found this limousine that is also buried and now stuck in the sand. Several houses here also took a pretty good hit this afternoon. And the authorities are saying to homeowners, don't try to come in and check on your house until Monday. They are not going to open the island to people until Monday. They know about 4,000 people left. Many of you are homeowners. You want to come in and see what's left, how much damage happened, but stay away. They are patrolling very strongly, Sheriff's Department, police done to the Brunswick County Airport. Now that hangar severely damaged by wind and rain, leaving airplane fuel all over the place. The damage done by Hurricane Bertha may not be fully realized in this area until those living on nearby Barrier Island and Bald Head Island can return home. Unlike Southport, Curry Beach took a beating from the hurricane. Vin Crosby picks up our coverage from there. Here at Curry Beach at 6 o'clock in the morning, Hurricane Bertha wasn't even a thought on our minds. It was supposed to be moving north-northwest and hardly a hurricane. But as of 8 o'clock this, still some people are... The waves kicked up, the winds kicked up, and Bertha took a beeline right here to Curry. Bertha was about 150 miles south of Wilmington this morning and exploding to the north. Through this morning, average seas of 4 to 8 feet were along Curry Beach, but quickly increased to near 20 feet by afternoon. Those punishing waves had a devastating effect on area piers, including this one here at Curry Beach. By 1 o'clock, it was gone. Bertha continued to devastate the area with winds up over 100 miles an hour. Shingles, gutters, and downspouts were peeled from area buildings and hurled through the air at speeds over 50 miles an hour. This wasn't a problem if windows were boarded up like many businesses were here. Our hotel room wasn't, however, and we paid the price. Keep this in mind as they're surveying damage tomorrow morning. Bertha could have been a lot worse. It came at a time of low tide. For NBC 17, I'm Vin Crosby from Curie Beach. How many of our crews are... And look back over there. Earlier today, those steps were touching the sand on the beach. Eventually, you know, where is it going? And that's the part that's so frightening. And uh, for myself, I'm not afraid, but for what, what this represents, yeah, it's very frightening that what's happening, you know, what nature is doing to us. And I think that people really should have an awful lot of respect for what water really is. Now, something we told you about that we thought would happen at 5.30 did happen tonight. A dune broke near Hatteras. There is some ocean overwash. Highway 12 is blocked. Just Mount Olive area are without power, and most of Johnston County has lost power as well. Those numbers are likely to increase as Bertha moves. In Durham, outages proved dangerous on the street. But Jim Payne, what we can tell you right now from the Outer Banks, it appears that the worst was to our west. And that's the good news from the Outer Banks. Mark, thanks. Damage reports are trickling in tonight. Here's some of what we know. On Topsail Island, the Jolly Roger Pier is destroyed. Ocean Boulevard is under several feet of sand. The north end of the island took the brunt of the storm. At Curie Beach, the mayor tells us there's an awful lot of damage. Roads impassable. No water and power. Curie Pier destroyed. At Emerald Isle, the police chief says it's the worst he's seen it in 15 years. No power and dozens of roofs have been blown off. In Beaufort, reports of boats in the streets, trees down, and no electricity. One thing all agencies told us, please don't go there, and please do not call for damage reports. They're just too busy right now. Well, south of the North Carolina line, the winds were heavy, but the damage is light. The rains were torrential and the surf was rough, but South Carolina seemed to miss the brunt of Bertha's fury. Scattered power outages and some downed trees in the area. There is a power struggle in both states tonight. More than one... ...are flight 1082 to clear... In the Carolinas. Crews are mobilizing tonight to help get the lights back on. Carolina Power and Light is helping to organize 2,000 workers to head to the coast. Crews from West Virginia, Virginia, and Kentucky mobilized at the state fairgrounds this afternoon. They'll 50280. We started feeling the effects of Bertha in and around the Triangle early this afternoon. Sheets of rain, the occasional gust of wind, but in some places, it got nasty. It was scary. It really was. This is why lots of people are frightened. High winds and heavy rains brought down trees, and trees brought down power lines. It's a mess out there. I was ready to go hide and find a closet, but it was over. 
When it was over, repair crews moved in, working now on scattered outages across the region. The roof of a barn at the Hunt Horse Complex on the state fairgrounds was ripped off by high winds, where hundreds of people and horses are there attending the 4-H horse show. Several horses were in the barn at the time, but luckily... Sending, yes, on into Virginia, and it looks like Washington will be in line to get some of the nastier weather associated with Bertha. Temperature is now still very mild. I've been in the... Oh, yeah. Did well it come in? Big scare at the World of Learning Daycare Center. This huge tree kind of eased its way on top of the building. High winds also pulled up trees in the playground. The children were down at nap, so been the biggest story for us tonight out of the north at 15 miles per hour, gusting to 24 miles per hour. CPNL says nearly 20% of the customers they serve are without power right now, and the situation stands to get worse. Rain bucket. Let's find out what is happening next step. Cancel. It's three morning flights at RDU. And see the feeder bands. This is what these little ribbons of rain are circulating around Bertha as it moves on out of the way. And actually, I think this might even be the center, just showing up in the edge of our screen right here. But most of this is very light to moderate rain. So really, in the rain department, we made out pretty well, which what we we haven't had rain here in a few days. So certainly very dry and getting a little bit of a, a nice thirst quencher this evening. That was for folks on the west side of the eye, so we made out so well in that respect. It was folks on the eastern side of the eye, of course, who had the real problems with the higher winds and the stronger thunderstorms, and many of those producing some tornadoes. But just like Michelle was saying a few moments ago with the tornado the folks in Kerry saw, they said, well, gosh, it was gone in no time. That's very typical. These are... Get going. The moonlight madness... We have a landfalling hurricane. They're down and then out really, really quickly and just enough to give us some problems here uh, like they had there. Let me show you once again. This is where the eye of the hurricane is at this point and continuing to move off to the north, northeast at 18 miles per hour. So I really anticipate this thing is going to be out of the state. Pof the 11 o'clock coordinates place at 100 miles southwest of Norfolk, Virginia. Winds at 75 miles per hour and the movement to the north-northeast at 18 miles per hour. Pressure going up, so uh, certainly it will be a tropical storm before all is said and done this evening. A few other things to share with you. Some of the winds around the area have been gusting, say, Fayetteville at 43 miles per hour around Fort Bragg. We've had 35-mile-per-hour wind gusts. Goldsboro. 35 mile per hour wind gust. So uh, certainly uh, things have been quite windy for us. Because it is just so brutal here. A lot of, uh, we've got some video we shot earlier, just a couple of hours ago. Uh, a lot of power lines down, a lot of homes that are still taking a brutal beating. Uh, boats in the water are still being beaten very hard. Now it is very ugly. It is very nasty here. Now uh, basically everybody is still off the island because they left earlier today. The evacuation notices went up a couple of days ago, and most everybody, even a lot of the diehards, left Atlantic Beach due to the rain. Now, we are, now the good thing about the rain is that we did not receive the kind of heavy rainfall that we thought we were going to. The flooding that we thought was going to happen has not happened. We are not in a flooding situation. Stronger winds force us all indoors. Now all of us have huddled into one room. We're riding out the storm right now. The winds continue increasing, uh, no doubt blowing with a near hurricane force gusts. It just shows you the power that the wind has here, and we're still about 75, 80 miles away from the center of the hurricane. Okay, it's pushing 3 o'clock right now, and one thing I'm starting to notice in the last 10 or 15 minutes, the winds were coming from a more easterly direction, and now they're turning to more of the northeast, which is an indication that the uh, center or eye of the hurricane is going to go just east of us and spare us the worst of the storm. Earlier, it appeared the eye was going to move east of us, but it uh, looks like we're on the west side of the eye right now because the winds have died down remarkably in the last 15 minutes to 15 to 20 miles per hour, and the rain has just about stopped. However, within an hour or two, it looks like we're going to have ferocious winds and heavy rains once again as the southern end of the storm comes over us. Watching a hurricane make landfall firsthand is a truly exciting experience, both for professionals and amateurs alike. Oh, look at that! Sweet! I'm on two shots. And uh, the uh, eye of Hurricane Bertha, of course, did come right over us mid-afternoon. A safe distance and uh, go where the officials tell you to go.
And it was certainly nice to have a meteorologist's perspective while we were out here weathering the storm. Jim and Greg, back to you. All right, thank you both. Yeah, you really gain a perspective and a respect for Mother Nature. If you've ever seen a tornado or ever been caught in a flood or stood in the eye of a hurricane or around the eye of a hurricane, boy, it gives you a whole new respect. Well, one thing that Brian would probably be interested in looking at is something we have next to me. Uh, Chris Thompson, one of our meteorologists, has what's called a microbarograph. And I don't know how well you can uh, see the trace there, uh, but uh, perhaps you can see how the pressure fell during much of the day and then bottomed out around 9 o'clock this evening and is now starting to come back up. But it's a continual trace of uh, the storm's approach and now the uh, fact that the storm is pulling away. You get the same type of thing with a tornado, but it occurs over a much shorter period of time. So, so. Just thought you'd like to see something like that. All right. From Florida to North Carolina, NBC 17 was there. Our own Mark Wilson is on the coast. As we felt the effects here in the triangle, NBC 17 kept you informed. So I did talk to emergency management earlier. Fast, first, and nonstop. You saw the most comprehensive coverage of Bertha on NBC 17, a new generation of news. 70 except Hatteras. Here's a review of the satellite imagery. And again, you watch the whole day with the thunderstorms really blowing up. And then finally the center comes on shore, and now we just have this little area of cold cloud tops in the northeastern corner of the state. Forward, man. At the Atlanta airport, the airline area, 35.8 north, 77.4 west. It looks like what's left of the center is near Williamston uh, in Martin County, moving north-northeast at 18, max winds at 75. And we will continue to do hourly updates all night until... All hurricane warnings have been taken down. Right now, they exist from Topsail Island on north. As soon as they're down everywhere, then uh, we can pretty much uh, stop the mode that we're in. Okay, here is a review of the composite radar from the whole east coast. And you can see the eye moving inland and still a hint of that circulation. In fact, more than a hint across the northern coastal plain. And this is the local National Weather Service Doppler radar. And again... The center of circulation becomes a little bit tougher to find. At least, well, it's tougher to find in the sense that you don't have the donut hole, the eye, like you did before. But if you study the movement of the echoes, you can still pick out where it is. The rain's very light across the triangle. No big deal here. Here's the storm. Should head out to the north and east toward Norfolk and should be into Virginia. with A fairly safe place, despite the look of it. And we think our truck is also in a safe place. So perhaps if the clouds cooperate, we'll be able to continue to bring you live reports so as you can see up close and personal, this is what a hurricane looks like live as it comes to shore. For now, Jeff Locke reporting live from Carolina Beach, North Carolina. Back to you folks. <laughs> that is covering Bertha no matter the risk. CNN Jeff's Flock holding on for dear life to report on the storm. He um, certainly was taking the brunt of it. Boy, we watched him all day long as he is enduring right along the coast. Well, showers and thunderstorms are starting to diminish a little bit as this storm lifts up. At least the more severe storms are moving out of the way to the north, northeast at 18 miles per hour. So it should be out of our state by tomorrow morning, and that is certainly some very good news. Now, we've had our own Mark Wilson on the coast. The trees and left widespread power outages across Sampson County. Bertha also took aim on rooftops and at this Roseboro church, the steeple, which now lays on the ground. The powerful winds chased hundreds of people to a Red Cross shelter set up at the Clinton High School. Better, I think. Lisa, not too bad. While the steady breeze continues to blow behind me, the high winds and heavy rains that we saw earlier this evening finally subsided. Has passed on, and while she did not unleash all of her might and fury here on the Outer Banks, there is no doubt she left her mark here. Okay, thanks, Mark, and look forward to you making it back home safe and sound. Well, we head from the weather to what you've been waiting for. Look at the sports reel. From the Weather Channel Forecast Center. The fury of Hurricane Bertha felt greatly this afternoon in North Carolina. This is Wrightsville Beach, just east of Wilmington, where Bertha came ashore late this afternoon with strong winds, pounding surf, and a six to eight foot surge as well. The storm surge causing quite a bit of devastation to the piers in the area. At least 75,000 people have no electricity, and the heavy rains have been causing flooding along with the storm surge. Now, this system is far from being over. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brad Edwards. Hurricane Bertha is still a hurricane, although a minimal hurricane at this point. Winds are down to 75 miles per hour, and of course, it was as high as 105 miles per hour, and some of the wind gusts do confirm that from earlier today. But it has been downgraded just to a minimal hurricane here, 75 miles per hour. Some of the strongest winds are still being felt here in eastern North Carolina. The latest coordinates, 35.8 north, 77.4 to the west, and it's moving to the north 
north northeast and it should continue this movement and it looks like it's going to be moving that direction toward uh, New York City and speeding up as it moves in that direction. Now, it's been relatively quiet over the last couple of hours in the Outer Banks, but earlier today we had 100 mile per hour winds in that area and now, Jeff, it looks like we have some strong winds back in the Outer Banks. Yeah, well, we have some winds picking up here in the last half hour or so, Brad. Uh, last time I was talking to you, I was starting to think that the hurricane was really kind of winding down, uh, at least as far as uh, Buxton was concerned. But then, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're getting wind gusts evidently at the uh, Billy Mitchell Airport there uh, at about uh, gusting to 50 miles an hour. And just recently, uh, I was talking to our uh, truck operator and we actually came off the satellite. In other words, the dish is getting blown around so much that we're not being able to stay on the transponder. Hopefully, I'll be able to, to, uh, to uh, be able to finish the report here with you. But it is a little bit gusty. What we are seeing with this particular little blast of wind is the rain that we had earlier and uh, I, just to reiterate I mean it was incredible here late this afternoon when uh, the big squall came through and it lasted for the better part of 45 minutes to an hour just tremendous wind and rain and winds probably gusting over 80 miles an hour at times wind uh, rain blowing sideways it was really a sight to behold and uh, uh, hope fortunately it didn't get any worse than that now, Jeff, uh, how is Highway 12 doing? We know that it had water covering it in several spots. Have you heard any more on that? I uh, have not heard any more about the worst spot, which was just north of Hatteras Village. Uh, we were down that way uh, doing some live shots earlier, very near that area, and the tide started coming up. We decided to leave, but the tide didn't, and it just broke through the sand dunes down there and covered up the highway with about a foot and a half of water at one point. Uh, that dune is gone, so I have to believe that any time that tide comes back in, which will be again tomorrow morning, will be the next high tide, that there will probably be some more flooding there. There, but uh, since the time we heard that there was a foot and a half of water there, we hadn't heard anything since then. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. And you've done a great job there on the Outer Banks. And uh, this will be the last report tonight. So have a good night's sleep. Well, thank you, Brad. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jeff. It has been a long, uh, long stretch there for Jeff and the Outer Banks. One of the hardest hit areas was eastern North Carolina. Let's go back to the radar and show you where the watches and warnings are now, or rather the AWG. And we'll show you. We do have the concerns still up here. As we take a look at the satellite imagery, you can still see see uh, where the system is and it is moving off to the north northeast has lost a lot of that color of course as it loses that color we know it's losing some of its steam here as far as the energy goes a lot of the low level winds are starting to break apart some of the highest wind gusts have been around 40 or 50 miles per hour and that's about it it is going to continue to speed up and move out to sea but in its uh, wake we're going to leave a lot of rainfall and possibly some flooding here are the uh, hurricane warnings still in effect from top sail beach all the way up to chincoteague we could have some uh, flooding conditions, certainly hurricane force winds, so watch out for that. And we also have tropical storm warnings up from Chicoteague all the way to Watch Hill, where there could be some wind gusts of 40 or 50 miles per hour, even through the day tomorrow up into Long Island. In Long Island Sound, we could have the possibility of those gusty winds and some storm surge effects could be felt here along the coastline. Not nearly as bad as it was in places in North Carolina. Some of the inlets were really hit hard. We're talking about uh, uh, some areas in the Atlantic Beach area and also uh, Camp Lejeure seeing some very gusty winds and quite a bit of a storm surge there. Shouldn't be as bad to the north as we go through the day tomorrow. Here's a look at the radar and you can still see where the center is right in there in North Carolina and moving on to the north. We've had some very gusty winds. Of course, Jeff was mentioning right in here, the Outer Banks were hit by these bands earlier this afternoon and that's when we had the really, really strong winds. We're still getting some banding here, but it's very weak as far as the rainfall goes. So we're looking much better in that respect. We have a tornado watch in effect, and that is often the case when hurricanes make landfall all the way up into southern Maryland and southeastern Virginia and northeastern North Carolina. We've had reports of tornadoes in Newport and New Bern and not far from Raleigh-Durham, and there has been some damage because of tornadoes. Of course, it'll have to be said tomorrow exactly what caused the damage because there's been straight-line winds and tornadoes in the same areas. Now, here's the rain moving up into Philadelphia, New York, and this is going to be an area that sees probably three 
to five inches of rain. We've already seen three inches of rain. These areas in yellow have seen three inches of rainfall and it's moving northward, so the potential is there for some heavy rainfall up through this area. We're talking an order of three to five inches. The faster it moves, the better scenario we have. Nonetheless, flood watch is in effect here all the way up through New York and Pennsylvania, and it looks as though the worst of it is going to be to the right of center, which will be along the immediate coastline up and down the east coast. Of course, that's going to affect a lot of folks here from D.C. all the way to New York City and Boston through the weekend. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Amanda Lamb reporting live from Curie Beach. Now, work, emergency workers were out first thing this morning assessing damage on Wrightsville Beach. That's where our Terry Gruca has been from the start. She joins us live now. Terry, we understand in comparison, damage there is relatively minor. Yeah, it's been really great out here at Wrightsville Beach. A lot of people really excited about the news that really not much damage here. You can see crews are trying to fix some of the problems out here, like this signal that got torn off during the middle of the storm. You can also look over here to my left and see that the media are still here, hanging out, trying to find out who's cleaning up and where. And you can also see the rows of cars, just cars piled up here, residents trying to get back on the island. They are finally being let on. It started about 11 o'clock, a lot of relieved faces, but it was a much different story earlier today. See, one way to, I'm a property owner, I want to assess my damage so I can get this young man here to fix it. The line started early. Many residents of Wrightsville Beach eager to get on the other side of the bridge to see their homes. And when they were told they had to wait, some tempers flared. Finally, at 11, they were let on, but it may not have been soon enough. And some say the wait may make them think we'll twice about leaving their homes the next time. No, I won't evacuate again. <laughs> it ain't a matter of changing my mind. I shouldn't have done it this time. If, it, now if I knew it was going to be like this, I'd have never left to start with. I'd have stayed there and watched. Now, the good news is, is that authorities are also talking about letting vacationers back over the bridge as early as sometime tonight, but they want to urge vacationers not to come back here right now. They are only letting residents in at this point, and they must have proper registration. Now, Deborah Morgan and Jay Jennings went over to Thompson Island, and you said you all saw some really bad damage over there. The, the damage is much worse up there because the east eye of the wall, of the eye wall, went over that area, so the wind damage and the storm surge did a lot more damage up on that part of the area than did down here. Right now, people are not being allowed back onto Topsail Island. We got a little way, but not all the way, but Sky 5 got us the best view from the damage. Several homes have major damage. The roofs are blown off some condos. Some roads are under four feet of sand. They had a 20-foot storm surge there on Topsail Island, which did much of the damage. That's because the strongest side of the storm came right through there. 40,000 people left before the storm, but about 50 people remained. And earlier today, we spoke to the police chief from Surf City about trying to rescue some of the people that wanted to leave at the last minute, plus a woman who did ride out the storm and to a frustrated man who was trying to get back onto the island. I'm out of here. And at one spot we pulled up, lady was crying, called her daughter up in Raleigh, and she says, I want out, get me off the island. Well, she's in Raleigh, she's not going to come down here. So he called us, and we tried to go up to get to her, and then we pulled up, a roof came off the house. And it's six feet from the patrol car. I mean, just smashed on the road. Yeah, it was scary. It was scary because the building was shaking, the furniture was moving, the wind was so, so strong that it literally blew the floor in the kitchen up, off the, um, <laughs> off the floor. So it was, it was unsettling, unsettling. But we survived, and I, I know now I would never do this again. But we've been here five hours now. It's pretty frustrating not being able to. Clean. Real frustrating. I just want to see. You know, I don't need to do anything. I just need to see what's happened to my house. It could be still several more hours before they're allowed back onto top. So because of all the damage, power is still out. They're trying to get the crews back onto the island first to clean up some of the damage and to restore power so that it's safe for people when they do go back over. And I know, Terry, we just had Rick Armstrong, who was allowed to go back over to Wrightsville Beach. And so we're just now getting to see some of the damage that was on Wrightsville Beach. Not as severe, apparently, compared to Topsail. Not at all. We can roll some of that footage. Rick just got back a few minutes ago. We have some video of the pier. We understand that about 50 feet of those Johnny Mercer here was destroyed in the storm. Also, a little bit of cottage damage there. A couple of roofs with the, the shingles torn off and things like that. But nothing compared to some of the damage we've seen in the other places, and like you've seen in Thompson Beach. And really just 
a good and happy ending here at Wrightsville Beach for a lot of people with residents being able to get back over to their homes. All the electricity is turned back on here, so really a happy ending. Certainly, and our Sky 5 pilot Steve Wiley said when he was flying over this area, some of the worst damage that he did see was in Thompson and not so much along here. But it's just amazing after the storm that we rode out yesterday mm -hmm. that there's not even more damage. Okay, thank Monica. you, Deb. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Terry, for reporting live there from Wrightsville Beach. A different scene in Dare County today where the beaches are reopened and businesses are back up and running. Robert Carver has that story. Well, it's a beautiful day here in coastal Dare County here in Kill Devil Hills. The sun is shining. The wind is a little bit breezy, but the surf, the surf is great. It's very calm out there. It's a beautiful day to come to the beach. Folks here in Dare County count themselves very lucky. And they're just waiting to get back to the business of summer. High water in Collington was just about the only sign that Bertha had visited Dare County. At Joe and Kay's campground, the water level had dropped more than a foot by 9 a.m. Elizabeth and Gordon Crop rode out the storm in their camper. We were packed and ready to go. But you didn't feel like it was going to be bad enough to go? Well, until the water broke over top of the, the bulkheads, then we decided to leave. But y'all never left? No. In Kitty Hawk, the churning surf ate away at the dunes protecting this beach house. But like its neighbors, it managed to withstand the storm. Layers of sediment lay exposed in the light of day, the only real erosion problem left from last night. Our people have been out this morning already to do what we call a windshield survey, and uh, we're not seeing anything substantial. I understand there may be a, a fuel island canopy that got bent up last night, some shingle damage here and there, but uh, just really nothing of any significance. Dare County did suffer the only fatality in North Carolina when an Elizabeth City woman died in a car wreck last night about 6 o'clock. Overall, though, people here count themselves very lucky. Now, although the mandatory evacuation order has been lifted, things aren't quite back to normal here in Dare County. All along the beach, you'll see red no swimming flags that remain up because of dangerous riptides and other surf conditions that aren't readily uh, noticeable when you simply look out at the water. The Lifeguard Beach Service tells me that those flags should come down tomorrow. All in all, people here in Dare County are counting themselves very lucky, and they're just ready to get back to the business of summertime and welcome the tourists back so they can replant some of the coffers that were uh, that ran dry during the evacuation period. Just ahead, a convoy bound for the Carolina coast and a possible tornado touchdown in the Triangle. We'll show you what happened when we come back. It's only material things. It's, um, it could be so much infinitely worse than it is. I looked up, I saw our porch roof go over the house. And at that point, I thought it left enough so the rest of the roof was going to come off. And about that time, fire department showed up and asked us if we wanted to get out. So we said, yeah. Residents are not being allowed back in until police deem the area safe. They say right now that will probably not be until Sunday evening at the earliest. This has a lot of property owners frustrated. Why can't I go back across the bridge? At at my own bridge. Bridge. Now, the estimate is that people will be allowed back in tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Yesterday, they had estimated Monday morning, so it looks like things are getting better. They are getting the cleanup underway. But I have to say that it is frustrating a lot of folks who are standing on the other side of this barricade, and they desperately want to get to their homes, Monica, just to see how they fared the storm. I guess the concern is obviously the things that are in the roadway. and. and Uh, here in North Carolina, uh, that's about all I can remember right now. Any idea how long they may be there? I have no idea. Down power lines are very dangerous and one of the reasons people are not allowed back into evacuated areas. Power is still a problem. Somewhere around 100,000 CPNL customers are still without electricity. Most are in the Wilmington area, including Wrightsville Beach and Carolina Beach. The main cause, winds where falling trees drag power lines down with them. At the peak of the storm, nearly 225,000 people were without electricity. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is working alongside state workers assessing damage. FEMA has a mobile communications truck on standby in Raleigh. The truck is equipped to handle radio, telephone, and television communications by satellite. It will be sent to the coast if damage assessment teams feel it's needed. 
The nation's top emergency official says it's lucky the damage from Hurricane Bertha isn't worse. Federal Emergency Management Director James Lee Witt says it could have been even more serious, and he's very thankful the storm spared so many communities. Damage reports are pouring in from some other beach areas along the Carolina coast. On Emerald Isle, the police chief says it's the worst he's seen in 15 years. High winds are keeping police from assessing the extent of the damage so far, but we do know there is massive power outage. Dozens of roofs blew off houses. Some mobile homes there were ripped from their foundations, and only emergency crews are permitted on the island today. In Beaufort, reports of massive flooding, boats in the streets, trees down, and no electricity. Now here's a roundup of what we know so far about the beach areas and access to them. Curie Beach is closed and expected to stay that way until Monday. Carolina Beach also expects to stay off limits until Monday. Wrightsville Beach is doing better. They hope to be up and running before 8 o'clock tonight. Topsail Island is shut down. Don't expect to get there until Monday. Sunset Beach escaped much of the storm and is now reopened. Emerald Isle has lots of damage. They're telling property owners to stay away till Monday. Same goes for Atlantic Beach, though damage is said to be less serious. Long Beach and Oak Island say they'll be open by this afternoon. The Outer Banks escaped much of the storm's strength. They reopened this morning. Wow. What a mess out there. Oh, what a big mess. Yeah. The ocean at both Carolina and Curie Beaches. In our biggest sports city, Wilmington, damage is mostly confined to fallen trees and power outages. In Surf City, the fishing pier collapsed. All five of the town's police cars, by the way, were wrecked, and 40 to 50 homes suffered severe damage. Six people were injured at Camp Lejeune. Two of them remain hospitalized this hour. Access to Emerald Isle is limited only to emergency and utility workers. Residents may be allowed back tomorrow. A massive tree is blocking Route 70 in Moorhead City. The mandatory evacuation order for the Outer Banks of Dare and Currituck counties has been lifted. And in Kitty Hawk, a motorist who ignored warnings to stay inside died yesterday in a traffic accident that's blamed on the storm. That was the ninth fatality attributed to Hurricane Bertha. Stay tuned to the News Channel for continuing Storm Track 96 coverage of the aftermath of Hurricane Bertha. Watch for live team reports on News Channel 11 at 6 and Night Watch. Our crews on the coast will show you the damage and the recovery efforts. That is our special Storm Track 96 report for this noon. As we said, we're working on the most up to date storm coverage for our later newscasts. For Jennifer Julian, Chris Homan, and the entire News Channel 11 team, I'm John Clark. Make it a good afternoon. We join Soul Train now. And it's uh, at times rather unpleasant to be standing out in. But tell Rick next time that better times are ahead because <laughs> after the hurricane is gone, boy, it uh, clears up in a big hurry. That happens a lot. Uh, clear blue skies, few wispy cirrus. Uh, the ocean, as you can see behind me, still pretty kicked up. Uh, this is uh, probably some leftover swells from Bertha. I'd say probably about a three to six foot uh, surf out there with maybe a few higher sets. Still uh, pretty nasty. We're coming into about low tide. In fact, low tide's about right now so we're not getting any beach overwash however I'll walk over here and show you behind me they're still as you said repairing the dune here from when we did have overwash yesterday which was uh, pretty nasty about a foot and a half to two feet of water just blasted through this dune and went right over highway 12 so they're still trying to fix that up and it really does a job on these sand dunes at times really kind of rips them apart here the only thing holding them together is the seagrass and the uh, and the, the root system here by the way I haven't forgotten my uh, coconut that uh, evidently came up from the tropics it has a few barnacles on it so it must have been out there for a while. All right, Jeff, uh, again, this is usually a very typically busy time of the year where we have a lot of folks on the beach. Not many folks out there today, huh? Not very many out here today. Uh, the surf is just uh, a little bit too rough. You'd have to be a very experienced windsurfer. I heard you talking to Rick about somebody mm -hmm. being out. There, there might be a couple uh, adventurous people out, but I wouldn't recommend it at this point. All right, thank you very much for that live report from Hatteras, North Carolina, where the sunshine has come back out and obviously the cleanup is underway. Let's go ahead and show you some of the latest advisories that we have on Tropical Storm Bertha. Here's the one from the Hurricane Center as of 11 a.m. And we'll get another one here in about uh, 20 minutes or so. Winds 50 miles an hour. It's moving northeast at 24. Uh, pressure's at 995 millibars as it continues to advance to the northeast. Just a swath of clouds here, folks, associated with this. And believe it or not, underneath just about all of these clouds, we are finding some very heavy rain. Uh, Rick mentioned earlier he hasn't seen a lot of rain on the coast, and uh, you'll see that 
uh, on the Doppler radar coming up. A lot of the rain has been inland. From Brigantine northward to the Merrimack River, tropical storm warnings are still in effect, and we do expect storm surge, especially with these bands here as the storm center moves up the coast, uh, to be anywhere from two to four feet on top of uh, what the wave heights will already be. So uh, some pretty high seas, maybe as high as eight to ten feet. Bill Keneally reporting now from Wilmington, North Carolina. Bill's got a word, perhaps, on uh, what the latest information is as the director of FEMA and the governor have been there for the, uh, now about two hours, Bill. Have you gotten any word from what they have found? A little bit of information now, Jim, starting to come on in. We do know the airport is open. It opened up around 9.30 this morning. The major airlines are now flying. They're having some trouble as they are still on emergency power over there. By the way, the power company tells us Carolina Power and Light, that is, hopeful that they can get restoration 95% complete by Sunday night. Now, I want to do a little rundown. We'll roll some video right here, and as I roll that video, I'll give you a rundown on what is open. Wrightsville Beach is now open to the residents. You must have proper ID. Any sightseers, forget about it. Also, Topsail Beach and also Surf City, all at Topsail Island, by the way, still closed. Carolina Beach and Curry Beach closed as well. That is all in New Hanover County. Bald Head Island closed. That takes us down to Cape Fear in Brunswick County. And by the way, Jim, there is a convoy of 50 power trucks now Ooh. heading down towards Carolina Beach as far away as Ohio. And they are going to do major work on Curry Beach and Carolina Beach the next few days. So Bill, I mean, would you gather by that information that probably from about Surf City and Topsail Beach on southward, uh, that's probably where the worst damage has occurred at this point? I think so, Jim, although we have very, very sketchy information out of Onslow County and Pender County. That area took a pretty direct hit. That takes us up around Camp Lejeune. We don't know how well they fared up around the Jacksonville area. We'll try to get that for you as well pretty soon. All right, thank you very much for that report. Okay. Bill Keneally again uh, with a wrap-up for us in Wilmington, North Carolina. I talked to uh, Rich Johnson earlier who has uh, some family in Washington Park and up in Washington. Now that's up the Pamlico River in from the sounds and there have been reports of lots of property damage there. Some piers gone, some coastal flooding and uh, tides there ran five to six feet above normal which is incredible for up in that river but it doesn't take much to bring the water up over the land and it's just a mess inland on some of those, uh, those river inlets. Well, folks, let's go ahead and show you the radar out of this uh, northeast, and we'll show you what's going on with the rainfall here. And you can see the tremendous amounts of rain which continue to inundate northern New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, uh, southern New York, and especially heavy rain right now from about the Capital District, Albany, Schenectady, Troy, on through Worcester. That one band there stretching down and then breaking up a little bit, then picking it up again from just south of Providence now on up toward uh, Hartford. So some very heavy rain is with that band. We've also heard reports of gusty winds. I told you LaGuardia was gushing to 38 knots, about 45 miles an hour. And then the probably one of the heaviest wind bands is offshore right now of Montauk Point and continue to move north. So some of the worst winds are on the way for Montauk Point within the next hour or two. Well, with us once again, uh, Rick Griffin, who is in an area of New Jersey who is experiencing very changeable weather conditions. And Rick, we just showed the radar, and there's still a band of some very intense rain to your south. Have you seen the rain pick up at all? Uh, you bet I have, Jim. This is one of the heavier showers we've had in a long, long time. And that uh, heavy band you've been talking about is moving into the area. I'd say visibility now out towards the ocean here is less than a quarter of a mile. And uh, without a doubt, a heavy pelting rain at the moment. Rick, uh, we were having some interference because of the rain. That's that's what the folks are hearing. It's kind of a kind of a choppy noise back there. But uh, we have uh, noted from the radar that we have some very very heavy rain moving on up, and you're going to probably be in this for the next 20 minutes to an hour. What about the wind? Has there been any increase in wind with this rain squall? Well, every time we get these bands coming through, the rain picks up, the wind picks up, but again. Uh, the winds do not seem to be as strong as they were an hour and a half to two hours to go. Well, one thing's for sure, the lens is uh, definitely taking the brunt of that uh, rain as well. It's, uh, it's quite hard to see you at this point in time. But I guess the good news is some of the sand you've been dealing with earlier is now washing off your jacket. Well, there's been a big improvement in that, believe me. All right. Thank you very much, Rick, for that okay. report from Highlands, New Jersey. Well, folks, again, we continue to watch the very heavy rain uh, and wind move up off the coast. Let's go ahead and show you the latest radar that we have for you. And sure enough, uh, that radar continues to show the very heavy rain. Here's Doppler radar out of Atlantic City, continuing to move on northward. Now, again, I apologize for not having a telestrator, but if you look south of the southwestern part of Long Island, across the bay, Sandy Hook is that, that little piece that comes out of New Jersey. And just south of that is High 
Islands. So Rick is just getting into that leading edge of heavy rain, which is moving on northward. Notice the center now, well north of Atlantic City. Looks like it's uh, just southwest of Tom's River, New Jersey, and there are still a couple of bands of heavy rain with that. Now off to the north and east, we're going to take you to New York City now. This is the Doppler out of New York City, and you can see this one intense band which is stretching southwest of Montauk Point out over the open waters. And there's some real interesting stuff with that band that we're going to show you with the Doppler radar. Now the Doppler radar here has several different modes. This one here that we're in now is actually estimating precipitation. Some of this could be a little bogus, but what I really wanted to show you was the rainfall that we've seen already in parts of Rhode Island, eastern Connecticut, and up into Massachusetts, uh, ranging anywhere from two to four inches. You'll note the scale there on the right, and also some of that heavy rain back through the Hudson Valley down into northwest New Jersey. Not as heavy on the coast, but inland we have seen some very heavy rain, and it continues to advance on off to the north and east. Now this is the Doppler radar radial velocity. This is giving us an idea of what the wind feel looks like with the actual uh, storm itself, and obviously there's a due south southeast wind coming on shore, and that's why you see that nice gray area stretching right across Long Island. That's where you get the transition. In other words, you go from the winds that are blowing toward the radar site to the winds that are blowing away from the radar site, and those winds are showing up in those bright orange and red colors. Now you'll notice the uh, darker blue, and then around that some lighter blue. That's where the heaviest core of winds is now, and that is pushing out toward the Hamptons and Montauk Point. So some of the gustiest winds so far still uh, yet to come with this band as it continues to move on northward. Again, heavy rain from Worcester into Providence, down to Buzzards Bay, and we continue to see the rain uh, move northward into the Boston area as well. You're about to experience some of the heaviest rain that you've seen thus, thus far with these bands, and again, it'll come and go uh, in waves. So some very heavy rain, obviously some wind still to deal with. We've got the time of high tide and wind gusts, which uh, along the coast could still gust in excess of 50 miles per hour. That's the latest on Bertha. We'll talk to you again in just about 15 minutes. It was a masterpiece. A large pizza with three kinds of pepperoni and 300% as much of it. It was pepperoni perfection. Let it go. New pepperoni perfection from Little Caesars. Three kinds of pepperoni, 300% vacationing from the Outer Banks of North Carolina on into New England this time of the year, along with boats as well. And uh, that just isn't the case as Tropical Storm Bertha, which was Hurricane Bertha yesterday, has obviously put a big dent in those plans. Let's go ahead and show you some of the wind gusts that we've seen so far from Bertha, and you can see why uh, you may have seen your plans dented just a little bit. This one stands out more than anything to me, this northern topsail beach at 144 miles an hour. Even though it's uh, unofficial there, uh, some of the thinking is that some of the worst damage from Bertha is down in this region here, on Slow Bay, on down toward uh, Curie Beach and Topsail Beach as well, down toward Frying Pan Shoals, Carolina Beach. You'll notice uh, the, the Frying Pan Shoals was 115 miles an hour there over the open waters. And as the storm moved inland here and continues to move on northward, the wind's not as high, especially inland, but there's 54 at Seaside, Ocean City at 63 miles an hour, so still some pretty intense winds to say the least. And we still have all of this energy, which continues to move on northward to New England with some very heavy rain, and so far most of the heavy rain has been inland. But look at this, the northwest flow, the sinking air on the back side of the storm. What a gorgeous time to be down in North Carolina now, at least with regards to the sun. Not so much for the cleanup and the residents that had to deal with Bertha. Well, with us right now, Rick Griffin, who's in Highlands, New Jersey, in extreme northeastern New Jersey, just south of Sandy Hook. And Rick, uh, we have seen from the Doppler radar some of the heaviest rain so far affecting you. Can you confirm that for us? I can confirm it. Seven inches, southern Virginia, eastern and east central North Carolina. This is just Elizabeth City with five inches of rain, and some residents there are saying that the rain was up to three feet deep. In addition, winds gusting to 50 miles an hour knocked down trees and caused some minor damage to some buildings, so not exactly pretty. Let's show you the latest advisory, if we could, on our hurricane, and uh, sure enough, as the hurricane continues to move on northward, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted as to what's going on. Advisory that I talked about a little earlier on. A little Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Mark Wilson. Leah Sanders is on assignment. She has come and gone, but certainly will not be forgotten. What was a powerful hurricane yesterday that slammed the Carolina coast is now a tropical storm. 
Bertha continues thrashing the northeastern coast with heavy, heavy rains and crashing waves tonight, leaving behind fallen trees and littered the streets with debris. Now, she has lost much of her punch, but her heavy rains have forced flash flood warnings throughout Maryland and New Jersey. We'll begin tonight, though, closer to home. North Carolina residents living on the coast spent their day cleaning up, and as NBC's Jim Hanchett reports, it could be months before residents and property owners there recover from this storm. Now she's called Tropical Storm, Bertha, but by any title, she's an unwelcome visitor, barging today through the mid-Atlantic states, New York and New England. Bertha saved some of her best for early this morning, spinning off tornadoes and windstorms in Virginia and Maryland. It sounded like a freight train coming. And then I told my wife it was a tornado. We went to get up, we couldn't get up. I just held her down to bed, and all at, all at once, everything started going around the house. Yesterday, Bertha blew through the Carolinas. But on the Outer Banks, no time was wasted in starting the cleanup. That gas station canopy was removed almost as fast as it came down. A quarter million people were evacuated before Bertha hit, many now returning home. For most, this was an inconvenience, but hundreds of beach houses and businesses will need repairs right at the height of the tourist season. The tourists will come back, but this 100-year-old tree in Southport, North Carolina, will not. Felled in 100-mile-per-hour winds, now its limbs are souvenirs of Bertha's big blast. Just carry this home and present it to my wife. She'll locate it strategically in place of her choice, and I'll be the hero. He may be a hero, but up and down the East Coast, Bertha is summer's big villain. And this region will suffer some relatively severe economic losses due to the storm. For instance, at this time of night, this marina would normally be busy. People would be baiting a hook, buying ice, coming back in with their fish. Uh, so this region's going to feel this storm in their pocketbook long after Bertha uh, flies out to sea. That's the story in Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. At this hour, I'm Jim Hanchett. Back to you now. Thank you, Jim. He tells us that other business owners will be feeling the effects in their pocketbooks, too, for quite some time, as they estimate that they will have lost $4.5 million in business each day of the evacuation this week. Further down the coast now, at Wrightsville Beach, residents got a good early look at the damage today done there. They were allowed back into their homes by noon. A landmark pier was among the many losses there. That's Johnny Mercer's pier. Half of it ended up ashore, just a few feet away from homes untouched by driving wind and rain. Sad, yes. Yes. I feel very bad about it. As for residents, they spent the day raking up leaves, figuring out what to do with those trees, trying to get things back to normal. So while the cleanup continues, North Carolina's farmers are concerned about the untold damages done to their crops. Some of them told Governor Jim Hunt today that Bertha's winds may have destroyed as much as 80% of their crop. Now, across eastern North Carolina, tobacco and cornfields were flattened. Some farmers say their crops were destroyed. Others say it is far too early to tell whether flattened tobacco, corn, or other crops will recover. Meanwhile, some better news for hog farmers. Most of the farms in North Carolina appear to have been untouched. The State Division of Water Quality took an aerial tour of the farms today. They say the hog lagoons escaped significant damage, but with all of the downed trees and debris, they had actually dip more difficulty getting to those farms. Closer to home now, residents are picking up the pieces in Cary tonight. Severe winds caused a lot of severe damage through two residential neighborhoods, one near Buck Jones Road and Orchard Street, the other near Kildare Farm Road and Walnut Street. Sue Yanello spent the day with residents as they worked to clean up, in the mess, clean up the mess and has the story. The sounds of cleanup in Cary for trees that snapped, cracked, toppled. Sam Thomason sawed limb from limb from a tree that barged in his door without even knocking. I'm just hoping I'll get to know my insurance guy a lot better on Monday. The tree had fallen from the other lot mm -hmm. and hit another tree and then hit another tree. So it's like a domino effect. <laughs> Linda Stanaway was lucky she wasn't around when this oak made her home a tree house. I'm glad everybody's okay. That's the main thing. All over town, trees down, as if the heavens yelled timber. Look at the damage these downed trees caused for this one family in Cary. One tree hit the satellite dish, another one hit the roof of the house, another one damaged the roof of their first car, and another tree topped it all off by smashing right into their second car's windshield. 
All this is tree companies raking it in all right. Bell South working to restore service to hundreds of families without phones. And business owners like Emily Cox thankful only the roof of her daycare center was hurt when this tree came crashing down. More than a hundred children inside. I'm thankful that no one was hurt. We can replace trees, we can replace playground equipment, we can't replace people. Yes, trees will grow back with a little cleanup, a little grassroots effort. In Cary, Sue Yanello, NBC 7. Sue also tells us now that the cleanup is not a one-day job. As you can tell from those pictures, it may take weeks before these pictures in Cary, before these neighborhoods, rather, get back to normal. Good news for those with storm damage. You can now get some free answers to any questions you might have about property damage, insurance, or home repair contracts. Volunteer lawyers from the State Bar Association will also help with any legal papers damaged or destroyed by Bertha. Now, for more information, you may call this 1-800 number. It's 1-800-662-7407 and ask for disaster legal services. Turning to more local news now, we have new information on a story we first told you about on Tuesday. The car involved in a hit and run of seven-year-old Cordell Canyon last week in Durham has been found. The car was found abandoned at the Innkeeper Hotel on Hillsborough Road. Cordell, meanwhile, still remains in critical condition tonight and no one has been charged. There was a fatal stabbing in Durham this morning. That marks the 27th homicide this year. Robert Gomez was found stabbed to death early this morning on Liberty Road. A witness says a group of men walking by Gomez's duplex began arguing with him, and then a fight started. Police have made no arrests. A rabid fox in Fayetteville has two families worried tonight. Benny Cox has been bitten by a gray fox with rabies, and his neighbors believe their puppy may have also had contact with that fox. Cox and his neighbors are on the beach this morning. Sun was out, the winds were light, it was beautiful. I don't know where you were, but where we were, the seashells were scattered all over the coast, huge ones, and of course, I brought a couple of natural souvenirs home. Well, good. We're going to fly through the Eye of Bertha tonight. You and I are going to go right through the Eye of Bertha, and we've been covering this uh, from coast to coast. Mark was up in Hatteras. I was at Curie Beach. We're going to show you some great video. Stay tuned. Now, here's certified meteorologist Ben Crosby with your 3D weathercast. Where's Bertha right now? It's a tropical storm, and it's gone. Look at this. In 24 hours, it's now exiting the United States. That's some good news. We come down the coast. You can see a few showers right in here over the triangle. We'll be going for a closer look. These are thunderstorms which came roaring over the mountains, but have fizzled since. And maybe there's a few up here just oh, northeast of the Raleigh area heading up towards the 95 way. Let's go back in time. Let's give you a rundown of what happened to Bertha. Remember last Thursday? Thursday at 830 p.m. This storm was well to our south, showing signs of weakening because of the jet stream winds. Notice the clouds being pushed off right here towards the east. These strong jet stream winds weren't allowing Bertha to intensify, and everybody kind of was taking things lightly, but then this jet stream relaxed. The storm started to erupt, and by Friday, 730 in the morning, hurricane warnings, which were posted well in advance, well, the hurricane, that means it's coming your way. It was on its way. Watch this. The eye starts to form right here, and it was a well-developed Category 2 hurricane. And at that point, at 1.30 in the afternoon, we were feeling the effects up and down the North Carolina coast. Winds up around 100 miles an hour. Look at this eye right there. That's the eye. That's where the winds are calm. The winds just being forced from the east-northeasterly direction. As we fly right on down through the eye, you'll be able to see right where the rains are diminished in the eye. Here's the eye right here. We're going to see the radar echoes coming on up as you can see all the winds being pulled in towards the center notice the rain it's all calm right in the eye all the rain well in advance of the hurricane here we go to southport this is where alia sanders was friday at 1 30 in the afternoon look at the winds up over 90 miles an hour at times lots of coastal uh, flooding and lots of damage here in the southport area alia sanders by the way all okay okay and now here's the big thing up here, right here by Curry Beach. That's where yours truly was, and watch me battle Bertha one-on-one. -on -one. Here we go. The seas were coming on in up to 20 feet at times, and here you'll see me trying to do a little work. It didn't work out. Mother Nature did win the battle as the winds were about 100 miles an hour at this time, and I was leaning my whole body into the wind and, well, taking it on the chin, just like the Curry Pier. Look at that, wiped out by the terrible surf. Back to the maps we go, and up the coast we go to Atlantic Beach. This is where Dallas Woodhouse was, and here's what he experienced, more in the way of coastal flooding. Look at that water rising rapidly. Storm surge, four to eight feet felt throughout much of the North Carolina coast. 
And finally, the big man on campus, Mark Wilson, he was in Hatteras, North Carolina, Cape Hatteras and the Outer Banks, and here's what he experienced right there. Look at this video. Winds up over 90 miles an hour at times as well. Lots of damage. Look at the shingles being blown around there, and the winds just pushing through the forest. Unfortunately, it's all gone. Oh, fortunately, it's all gone, and we can expect calm conditions. However, there is some rain in the four-day forecast, and we get to the forecast right now overnight. Talk about that. Yep. I'm Brad Edwards, and this is Christina Abernathy. That's right. It seems like Bertha's been around for days mm -hmm. and days, finally moving off the New England coast, but not before it caused some rather inclement weather. These are pictures from Moorhead, North Carolina. Moorhead City, actually. This was the scene on the shore of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, shot by resident Steve Valentine. You can see the crashing waves there, plenty of rainfall as well as a lot of windy conditions, certainly tossing the boats about there. The seas were rough today at Highlands, New Jersey. Bertha was downgraded to a tropical storm when it passed through the region this afternoon, but it still brought heavy rains to the area. The storm quickly passed and headed to the northeast, leaving the New Jersey residents only soggy and windblown. Bertha roared through New York City this afternoon. In Manhattan, people ventured out to check out the tropical conditions. Walking was okay, but driving was a bit hazardous. Numerous accidents were attributed to minor flooding. There were some trees knocked down by the winds in some parts of the New York area. And of course, when we have tropical systems, uh, tornadoes are always a possibility, especially with a landfalling hurricane. Several tornadoes touched down in Virginia as Bertha moved through. This video is from Smithfield in Hampton Roads area where 15 homes were damaged. Another tornado later in the day hit Edwardsville and damaged several mobile homes. 28,000 Virginia Power customers were without electricity during the day and beaches were closed to swimmers because of dangerous riptides. Well, let's see what the latest coordinates show us on Bertha. Now centered at 42.8 north, 70 west. That puts the center about 60 miles northeast of Boston. Maximum sustained winds now 50 miles per hour. Moving off to the northeast, it's picked up some speed up to 29 miles per hour. Was moving at 26 miles per hour earlier. And it's going to continue, we think, to increase in speed, race on off to the northeast, away from the U.S. And that's good news. We've been dealing with it for days and days. Five Finally moving on out of the picture, although we still do have a bit of wet weather occurring in parts of the northeast, in particular Maine. You can see the cloud cover here, the oranges showing you where the uh, heavier activity is. Things really quieting down here for southern New England, for New York, New Jersey, but still soggy conditions here through Maine. Let's see what's going on on our radar picture. Again, no rain showing up for Albany. For quickly became a tropical storm traveling on off to the north northwest moving through the northeastern Caribbean causing uh, some damage there and also peaking here on the 9th. The peak intensity 115 miles per hour then moving on towards the Carolina coast, North Carolina in particular on up the northeast coast into New England where we now see it again racing on away from the New England coast and it's just a bit of information here. Something quite interesting actually is this is the farthest east we have seen this sort of tropical development this early in the season in July. We usually would not look this far out into the Atlantic, so this is certainly uh, unusual. Well, we've had a great deal of coverage of Bertha as it is uh, headed on through the Atlantic and on into the East Coast. Our Bill Keneally files this report. Powerful winds, driving rain, the effect of Hurricane Bertha as the storm made landfall yesterday between Cape Fear and Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. The storm punished Wilmington, downing trees and power lines, knocking out electricity to more than 113,000 customers on the coast. Crews were busy today trying to restore power. One of the greatest examples of Bertha's strength was demonstrated on the Cape Fear River. Hurricane force winds caused this old Navy destroyer to do a 180 degree turn. Incessant northeast winds forced the ship to ram a small marina, damaging several boats nearby. And when I got here, I saw the destroyer had, had slipped its mooring and was crushing into the dock. At that time, it wasn't it was far enough away where I could have got the boat out, and somebody had offered to swim over there with me. Here in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, residents returned home to assess the damage caused by Hurricane Bertha. 
A beach landmark, the Johnny Mercer Pier, was one of several in the area sustaining major damage. Packing winds of 105 miles per hour, people here in the North Carolina coast are comparing Bertha with previous hurricanes Hazel in 1954 and Diana in 1984. While the damage is still being assessed, Bertha will be remembered as one of the strongest landfalling hurricanes to strike the U.S. in July. I'm Bill Keneally, the Weather Channel. Now, the weather wasn't all bad. Of course, it's our job to tell you about the bad stuff. Let's tell you a little bit about the right time. Good evening, I'm Nancy Byrne. Tonight's big story, Carolina cleans up what Bertha left behind. The winds and rains from Hurricane Bertha destroy miles of North Carolina crops. I'm Rod Coffey. I'll show you the impact that it had coming up. And the storm turned property upside down. Now you can help turn their lives around. We'll show you how. Stick around. Your 10 o'clock news starts right now. You're watching Fox 22. North Carolina's award-winning primetime newscast, the Fox 22, 10 o'clock news. Sunday night as the cleanup continues, the price tag grows in the wake of Hurricane Bertha. Bertha raised the roofs, but the storm also flattened the fields. Some farmers tonight say they are ruined. Tobacco and corn crops took an unbelievable beating from Bertha. Fox 22's Rod Coffee starts our coverage in Wayne County. I just didn't want to see it, really, to see how bad it was, and it's, it's bad. It's as bad as I thought it would be. Gary Morning's tobacco crop was crushed by the weather created by Hurricane Bertha. 86 acres valued at $750 an acre, broken, bent, and soaking wet. This is our money crop. This is, uh, this is what hurts me the most right here. The Reedy Branch family farm translates into about a thousand acres of income, and tobacco is just one of the crops bringing in cash. That looks bad there. Right? Gosh. Across the state, some farmers are reporting as much as a 90% crop loss. But here at the Reedy Branch farm, tobacco and corn weren't the only property destroyed by the storm. The sound of wind and rains worked this chicken coop into a frenzy, killing many of the birds just as they were being prepared for market. Losing 800 birds at this stage. My birds are going out tonight. 800 birds at, at around five and a quarter pound a piece is, is devastating. Mooring says the poultry can't be replaced. The corn isn't insured, and the tobacco loss seems to mount with each passing step. It's just devastating, absolutely devastating. In short, he says, it all adds up to a financial and emotional nightmare. My kids have always wanted to go to Disney World, you know, and I've been promising them maybe this year, maybe next year, whatever, but this year we really had hopes uh, of, of making that trip finally, and uh, it don't look so good right now. Tomorrow, an insurance adjuster will assess the damage, and the cleanup will begin. In Wayne County, Rod Coffey, Fox 22, 10 o'clock news. Well, it's not just farmers in Wayne County having problems. It's a $15 million headache in Onslow County. Bertha leveled at least half of the county's tobacco and corn crops. On Emerald Isle, people are trying to clear away memories of Bertha. 750 extra utility workers are cleaning up the debris. Dock owners are fishing out the remnants of their splintered piers. And as beach, as beach goers return to the island, they're piecing together the homes that Bertha ripped to shreds. In the Outer Banks, tourists are returning turning and the boards are coming down. Bertha left her mark on the shoreline massively eroding the beaches. Vacationers are allowed back on the sand but not in the ocean. Businesses are also opening their doors again but store owners say they'll never make back what they've lost. It's an 18 million dollar price tag and counting. That's the damage estimate from Wrightsville Beach. Work crews there are still picking up the pieces. Many people are also without power. CPNL says about 12,000 homeowners are without electricity. A little farther up from Wrightsville, folks are coming back to Surf City for the first time since the storm and they're getting an up-close look at what Bertha left behind. Fox 22's Liz Hamill reports. A vast array of homeowners make their way back to Surf City, the first time since Hurricane Bertha ripped its way through this coastal island. And now that it's gone, everyone's trying to figure out what it left behind. Wow, it's like we've acquired someone else's debt here. 
Bertha took a heavy hit on Surf City's north end. The word here, a 20-foot wave leveled a sand dune, tore off this roof, and crumbled a few decks. It also made its way inside the Langdon's home, luckily causing only minor damage. I think we're darn lucky, really lucky. Yeah, quite, quite surprised from what we had heard of the conditions here that in this particular area that the house was uh, as, as healthy as it is. The signs of Bertha everywhere, damaging just about every structure on the island in some form. Hurricane Bertha cut a path right through the Surf City Pier, throwing its boards and planks all over the beach. The sounds of cleanup can be heard all over the island. Tractors clear away the sand-covered streets. While shop owners spray it away. Honestly, we're very in good, sh very good shape. Uh, there was tremendous amount of sand inside and um, a little bit of water damage, but other than that, we were lucky. Some, however, weren't so lucky and spent the day either digging out or building back on. Minor details, some say. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. That will stand as a reminder of just how lucky Surf City was. In Surf City, Liz Hamill, Fox 22, 10 o'clock news. The storm didn't just damage coastal Carolina, it also tore apart inland sections of the state. This is what homeowners are facing in Wendell. Fallen trees, debris littering the streets. People say it will be days before they can get everything back to normal. And still no word on when or if the state can expect federal relief. Now we'll show you a list of which state beaches are open and which are closed a little bit later on. But first, a look at how many homes Bertha turned upside down and how you can help people turn their lives around. Stay with us. Good evening, I'm Matt Lundy. Tonight's big story, new clues to the crash. Work crews find TW coming up we tasted a ago. As a result, homeowners are looking for help, but they won't get it from Uncle Sam. Fox 22's Rod Coffee shows you why. Francisco Meleve has already paid a heavy price for Hurricane Bertha's damage. Now, the government has denied federal aid to help rebuild North Topsail Beach surprising property owners like Wayne and Marsha Dean. Well, we were rather disappointed. I mean, we'd like to think that the government could help, you know, some. But the government says Congress said erosion made North Topsail Beach unsafe more than a decade ago. Therefore, federal officials told local officials they wouldn't get help in the event of a disaster. Now, Onslow County and its residents may have to pay the price. They have the insurance. That's what they pay the insurance for. And they paid it for all these many years. These people aren't in the federal flood zone. They paid dearly for that insurance, so now they're going to get to use it. The government says only people with houses or businesses built before 1982 may be eligible for federal aid or people who are willing to move off the island. Those options have people around here taking a hard, cold look at their dilemma. I don't think we're going to move. I mean, we just bought this house um, two, two, two months ago. Um, you know, that was, that was bad luck. Uh, yeah, we just, I think we're just going to you know, stay here. Even with restored power lines and rebuilt roads, some say the future of North Topsail Island is unstable. Meanwhile, despite an afternoon rain, others chose a brighter outlook for the area. In a year when it's forgotten, everything will be fine again. And people will come back to the beach, the sun will come out again. In Oslo County, Rod Coffee, Fox 22, 10 o'clock news. Hard luck for some of those people. Yeah, a lot of damage. When the 10 o'clock